Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you for tuning into another Subities video. And in this one, I will be constructing a tier list for the racials available in World of Warcraft from a competitive PvP standpoint. And by watching this video, you will know exactly which racials are going to be best suited for you, your play style, and your goals within the competitive World of Warcraft PvP. Not to mention, if you want to stay up to date with news and changes related to the game and entertaining content, then do hit the subscribe button. There has been a lot of of changes and you probably missed out on a lot by not already being subscribed so I do appreciate your support and hitting that subscribe button but let's get started here with the tier list the first racial up for uh, discussion is going to be the blood elf racial now this one arcane torrent in the past was really powerful as a silence not really so much anymore arcane torrent is now a dispel effect or has been for some time uh, this is really only super potent usually when paladins are meta for the removal either of blessing of freedom or blessing of protection um other than that it's not a, a, a tremendous benefit in pvp uh from my view now as a demon hunter you only have a choice between night elf and blood elf when paladins are strong i think that blood elf can be great but now that we can play cross faction pvp i think blood elf is really going to start to lose uh, a, a significant amount of value because you can just be a night elf demon hunter and play with horde before you had to be a blood elf so for me i I think blood elf is honestly it's not the worst racial in the game uh it does still have a place where you can get some extra purges maybe on a resto druids heal over time effects um, but it's definitely not as powerful as it has been in the past dark iron dwarf now this one's a very easy s tier especially given what is expected for meta picks in terms of feral druids and assassination rogues um, not to mention casters warlocks the removal of damage over time effects and getting a big stat boost which is the main benefit of dark iron over that of the standard dwarf really good pick if you can be a dark iron dwarf this is probably going to be the most competitive option that you could go for there are other ones that will have advantages in other scenarios but this will be the most well-rounded now drakthir this is really you don't really need to rank this right like drakthir can only be drakthir evokers um, and you can't be anything else so i'm kind of just like throwing this here because it's like you got no choice right in the future, this might change, who knows? Um, but for right now, there's no point in, uh, in ranking the Drakthir. Draenei, this is going to be bringing you Gift of the Naru, an extra heal over time effect. Not really stupendous in comparison to some of the other options that provide healing. Um, so it's really tough for me to say that this is like the best in the past and older expansions to give you hit percent chance and had other valuable reasons to come into the game. Uh, so for me, it's kind of like Blood Elf. It's You're going to be able to get some value out of it, especially if you play a class that doesn't have any healing, which is, I mean, how many classes really don't have any healing? That might be the other reason why its value is so low now is that everything heals. Um, so it, it's really tough, but... You could take it as a secondary school of magic if you're playing something like a shaman. Again, Dark Iron Dwarf's going to be way better. So I think it's fair we put it down here. I'm really trying to argue hard for you Draenei's out there, but uh, Draenei is going to be a tough pick, I think, for me in PvP. Now, Dwarf... You're fighting directly um, with Dark Iron Dwarf, and the, the difference is that you don't get a stat benefit when you activate um, your racial, so that's a big drop off. Uh, I think that given the meta classes, that it'll still be you know an option, but if you were picking between the two, like you're really going to be going Dark Iron Dwarf more often than not. Undead, super powerful when fears are meta, which they are likely to be with warlocks and shadow priests and possibly warriors and even demon hunters now have a fear so undead actually does have a decent spot in terms of being able to remove that important crowd control you get a little bit of extra dps not to mention the huge boost of dps because you look so cool um, so for me i think undead with this current season one is probably going to be a decent pick uh, if you really want to be playing on the horde now gnome this can be really good or really bad really depends on the situation now if balanced druids are meta gnome is very competitive because you'll be able to remove root solar beam as a healer so if you're a healer that can be a gnome and balanced druids are expected to be very powerful gnome is a good pick balanced druids probably middle of the road you're gonna maybe see it a couple times but not super popular so as a healer it's probably not mandatory i think you're probably going to want to be better off being something like dark iron but in those situations you will you basically auto win against the balanced druids so it can be really powerful there and then if you're a melee dps with limited mobility fury warrior doesn't have blade star anymore to get out of roots uh it can be situationally good there but dark iron dwarf can remove some roots as well and you also get the benefit of removing uh damage over time effects so it's kind of tough for me there I, I think that it's it's likely an all right pick 
Again, if you're countering Boomkin, super good as a healer. If you're very limited uh, mobility melee DPS, maybe if Rep Paladins could be gnomes, <laughs> then uh, you'd want to go for it. But it's going to be a little bit less competitive. But there's more scenarios than not where I think you will get value. Roots are really prevalent. Goblin, this is a mobility-based uh, racial as well, which gives you the rocket jump. Unfortunately, you're... you're Rocket Gloves do not do as much damage as they have uh, in the past, so you don't have any sort of damage component. You do get 1% haste, which is also what Gnome... Gnome's get a decent stat benefit, so I think it puts them fairly up in the B. But for Goblin, I, I really don't think its mobility compares to High Mountain Torrent, for example, or Void Elf. Um, I think that those mobility options are better. Uh, stat allocation is more oriented to offense rather than defense. That's where I would say between High Mountain Torrent and Goblin. Um, you can do cheeky things like jumping off ledges and then rocket jumping back up onto a platform. Uh, so this is really good for ranged DPS that want to kite melee DPS. Um, but again, if you're picking between Dark Iron Dwarf as, let's say, an Ellie Shaman, and you want to remove all the Assassination Rogue bleeds and, and dots on you when you're dying, like you're, you're probably not going to go with goblin uh it's a little bit more cheeky and more risky uh i think it's probably coming in more towards the bottom um that's just where i'm placing it right now offense is just gen generally not as valuable right now whereas high mountain torrent i actually do think high mountain torrent has a huge amount of value you get versatility stat you take a little bit of less extra damage and you get the extra mobility um, and it can stun and interrupt unlike that of the goblin so you get kind of like this ranged uh, skill shot that you can shoot out and I've been playing this for a long time probably the only druid that stayed with it actually in the game but I've won so many games with it especially in rank one range by landing a high mountain stun as an interrupt or getting away when I was about to die so I actually think that high mountain torrent is really underrated um, given that it provides you versatility, the most valuable PvP stat, you take reduced damage, it hits an extra CC, and it doubles his mobility. The only downside is when you accidentally hit someone you didn't mean to and put them on stun DR. That's something to take into account, but I actually think High Mountain Torrent is a phenomenal pick. Human, human is likely still going to be strong, um, given now the new changes to the trinket bonus and the extra bonus from crafted gear with a 5% CC reduction, wearing relentless, you know, and being able to get the human racial, not as big of a benefit, but I still think it is likely to still be strong, um, which is why I'm putting it up onto A. Uh, again, you don't get the defense bonus uh, that Dark Iron Dwarf gets, which I think is going to be super important, uh, but it's definitely still going to be a competitive option. Kul Tiran, this is another one that's underrated. I am seriously debating going going Kul Tiran on my Druid, um, or if any class that has it, because it gives you the ability of an extra knockback which also stuns a target for three seconds that's an insanely long duration of a stun i believe you also get versatility uh, if my memory is serving you uh, serving me right um, i i think that cult hearing is actually really nasty uh especially in solo queue pvp if you bring someone into a bad position knock and stun them behind the pillar and then blast them if you're a class that doesn't have a lot of baseline stuns um and you're like a ranged dps i, I think cult hearing is super underrated i'm actually throwing it up on the a tier i think it brings defense bonus passives the it's, it's, it's literally deep freeze um for for a racial like i i think cult is really underrated I think it's really strong. Lightforge Draenei, this one is either hit or miss. If the damage on it is good, so when you die, you explode. And you can also activate this laser from the sky that blasts people. When those abilities do damage, this thing can be really nasty. But I, I, right now, I don't think it's doing any damage. So this is one where it's like, if it's tuned to do damage, it's really scary. You can pick it, but it, I don't think that it's tuned at the moment to do damage. So it's, it's falling a little bit flat. Magar Orc really not going to be benefiting you too much in pvp this is kind of like really only benefits you in the world with all the extra mobility that you get from it it's definitely not going to be a super competitive option uh when it comes to pvp mechanome i think this one's pretty underrated especially given how high our hp pools are when you dip low you get an extra shield again that added extra bonus of recovery this is a mechanic that's generally been overpowered in the past for pvp so i think that mechanome can be a, a great option um for going into pvp not going to be as valuable as dark iron just because you have full control of it sometimes your mechanome racial might pop when you've got another defensive up and it overlaps you can't stagger them but it's still a decent pick nightborn I'm sorry, guys, but a three-minute cooldown piercing howl is just not going to do it. It's just not going to do it. The extra magic damage is not enough to benefit. Now, if it's, you know, if it's AOE little slow thingy that it have is a lower cooldown than three minutes, possibly. Um, but three-minute cooldown piercing howl not going to be good in PvP. 
Night Elf. This for me is an S tier. You can completely immune an important CC when you don't have a trinket. You can completely immune a hard hitting spell. You can shadow meld to re-stealth as some classes to escape. Uh, I think that if you can be a Night Elf, it is a really good pickup. High skill cap, super rewarding gameplay, and you look awesome. So yeah, Night Elf, really good pick for PvP. Orc, I think, is losing a lot of value. You're still going to get an on-use trinket, and you're still going to get pet damage. So if you're a hunter or a warlock, demo warlock with a pet, uh, I think that you'll still get a, a decent boost of damage from this, but the extra stun reduction is just really maybe not going to be as good as it was. But if you're those pet classes, I think that it's in a good spot. That's why I want to talk about it, put it kind of in the middle uh, for right now for that reason. But if you're picking it just because of stuns, there's there's gonna be better options now i think with the with the new bonuses towards cc panda another racial that brings heavy crowd control similar to the cult here but this time it's on incapacitate or polymorph diminishing return can be really good for classes like shadow priest or priest in general that don't have incapacitate they can stun they can silence they can fear and then you can add an incapacitate into that really good for classes that need to like catch up to their target to get their crowd control like aoe fears so panda can definitely be a really good pick you get some added versatility stat really good racial um to pick overall for pvp Torin, this is one where like sometimes it's really good sometimes it's really not i don't know how many times in shadowlands i died to a rep paladin because they war stomped um so if you're a high burst class that can get in somebody's face land a war stomp and then blast them out with damage people don't trinket it because they're thinking like this is like a one second stun i'm not trinketing this this doesn't make sense but then they're dead and they lose the game and that happens to so many people like it's crazy. And then if you're a class that wants to chain crowd control, like a war stomp into a cyclone, possibly a war stomp into a polymorph, because you can do that now. I've seen a lot of mages not really liking their time on this. Definitely don't want to pick it if your class have a lot of stuns. I'm sorry, anybody who's a rogue who wanted to check out Torn because like what if I can be it, I may as well be it. Uh, probably not gonna be a good pick if you're a class that has a lot of stuns. If you're a class that doesn't have a lot of stuns, can chain into crowd control, or you're a class with really high burst and you could KO somebody, you're probably better off being Kultiran if you can uh, in that situation. I think that it's under rated i think in those scenarios it can be really good it probably deserves to be up on the a tier just given like the burst situations uh, i'm gonna throw it up here but i think cult if you can be cult would be better um but his aoe so if you got multiple enemies on you war stomp them and get away it's really situational niche uh probably want to say orc is better than no we're gonna have to reorganize this at the end because left to right usually means uh, best to worst uh, troll this is one of the few racials that actually gets you throughput offensive value um with extra haste and then also you're going to get snare reduction can, which can be really good if there's you know chains of ice sorry death knights are probably not going to be <laughs> maybe chains of ice is not gonna be a big deal with frost mages for melee classes something like warrior um being able to get that snare reduction as well as extra haste for damage this is this is one that you're picking that because you really want to do a lot of damage and you're not really worried about dying um or taking a huge amount of pressure so i think that it can work in those scenarios but it's usually punished um and it's such a short duration that people can usually either avoid you um or you're not going to get too much value out of it but this is like your main offensive pick when it comes to pvp we've got void elf void elf super good just super underrated super insanely good you get extra mobility which can juke enemies out with your little teleport you also get an extra just passive damage increase uh over time this is a really good racial i'm really tempted to put it on s tier um just for that reason mobility is usually more punishable because melee class can catch up to you this is usually limited to range dps i'm not i don't think you'd want to pick a void off if you're a melee class maybe it could be but you already have enough mobility as melee you generally are going to be picking void off because you're a shadow priest or a warlock you want to kite more get into a better position and benefit from the passive damage maybe it's the best of the a it's probably more of a fair point. Vulpira, this can be underrated. The damage portion of its bag of tricks is really not doing too much damage, but the healing part of it can be substantial from my experience playing it. So if your class that doesn't have the ability to heal, little keck, pretty much everything can heal. So you're, you're going to be pretty low. Um, the healing benefit can be good. Um, you're probably coming in about middle of the pack. It's a lot better than Goblin um, or Drenna, I think. Actually, it's, it's maybe it's competitive with Goblin. Definitely better than Lightforge if Lightforge isn't tuned properly. Now we've got Worgen. This is going to give you extra crit percent and extra mobility. Um, sprint from this effect is really minor, and you really get snared almost immediately on it. Crit is generally not super valuable. So for me, Worgen, it's probably the best of the worst options. Like Drakthir is unranked. We're not counting Drakthir. Um it's probably the best of the worst options, but not stupendous. And now Zandalari Troll. This is 
pretty much the only thing in the game that wants to be a Zandalari troll is a paladin, but you can be a dark iron dwarf. So why would you want to be a Zandalari troll? Because you're the only class in the game that can benefit from its healing, which is you stand still and channel a really big heal. So you can divine shield and then start channeling a full heal uh, on yourself. But again, if you're a holy paladin, you could just heal with beacon of light and heal three people instead of just only healing yourself. So it's really situational really only useful for paladin you have a couple of other things that proc a little bit of extra crit um but it's it's really not good i i want to say that it's like probably better than light forge Jedi, um but not stupendous so let's organize this based on like left to right best to worst so dark iron best night elf that makes sense for me undead high mountain about even human cultiran probably about even mechanome I mean, Panda's better than Mechanome, Torin, Mechanome, Troll for damage, Dwarf is like secondary Dark Iron, so it's like it's, you can make it work, but I don't know why you wouldn't just be Dark Iron. Orc, really good for pet classes, Gnome, really good for mobility, countering Boomkins, Blood Elf, generally like Purge, great, but not stupendous compared to, to the rest of the other options. Drana gets a heal, but everything heals. Volpira gets a heal, but everything heals. Goblin gets mobility, but it doesn't get the benefit. It's not as long distance as Void Elf. The damage bonus isn't as valuable, extra haste compared to percent damage, I don't think is as good. Um, and then Zandalari, only good for Paladins, and you'd rather be just using other heals anyways. Uh, and then Lightforge Draenei, really good when the damage is there. I don't think that it is right now, unfortunately. Worgen, mobility not great. Magar Orc, just really not good at all. Um, Nightborn, three-minute cooldown, piercing how Keck W. Uh, and then we got Drakthir. You got to be a Drakthir Evoker, so there's no choice there. No, it's unranked. Other than that, I hope that you've enjoyed the video here. I hope you've got a better idea of what to pick for yourself, what classes work with these racials. I wanted it to be as encompassing as possible, so this video probably went on for a little bit. Uh, but I hope that it gave you the information you need to be able to make your choice in what sounds like the best and fun combination for you when it comes to competitive PvP. Other than that, thank you very much for watching the video, and I will catch you in the next one.